I think the one thing that stops us from pursuing this type of life that we dream of is the thought of not being good enough or the where do I start or how do I start? It's probably the fear of what others will think of you, right? The doubt and insecurities that bury you beneath your true worth. And then all of a sudden you dug yourself into a hole too far deep that you don't even bother trying to get started. I mean, I was there once, twice, bro, multiple times. And don't get me wrong, it still be there, but it's gone better each time. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Desiree LeCap, AKA LeCapture. And in this video, we'll talk about what we're getting into. Let me get to the chair. I'm gonna talk to you about my filmmaking journey from when I started to where I am today and almost everything in between, the raw, the truth, the pain, the success, the lessons, heartache, happiness, creative blocks, hurdles I had to jump over, and the walls I had to break down. And just so you know, no matter where you're at in your life, anything is possible. Because all of this and all the experiences that I'm gonna explain and the willingness to never give up has made me pretty successful. And I believe sharing my experience with you will help you see the light when you feel like nothing's working or worth it at all. Okay, so where it all started. In middle school, I was basically that kid walking around with a camera. It was like a small purple point and shoot, just recording everyone and everything. It was so fun just to really capture memories that I didn't think anything of it because it started off as, you know, those doing it for fun type of hobbies. But as years went by, I was definitely avoiding the fact that I started to gain an interest in video editing. That's how I truly fell in love with filmmaking first, all the post-production process. And I'm not even kidding, I tried all types of different videos to see what I liked, disliked, what worked and didn't, and what ultimately felt right. So from filming homies who did music, I did many documentaries, vlogs, weddings, and party recaps for people I knew. Um, I even tried spec commercials and played around with a ton of After Effects. So to be honest, looking back, I didn't know nothing about anything camera related or the latest and greatest gear. I basically just went in with a $300 camera I bought off of Craigslist. But regardless, I legit tried it all while having fun, of course, because I wasn't thinking too hard about it. So this was all while I was in college and halfway through, I was so ready to get out into the real world and be on big film sets, work with big actors because I thought I was ready. Yet I ended up taking the entire experience for granted and reality done slapped me in the face hard, let me tell you that. When I graduated, there was so many transitionings happening at once that I basically, I fell into a really, really deep depression. I hated myself, I hated the shit I created, the ideas I had got killed left and right because I didn't think they were good enough. And I'm telling you this because I want to be vulnerable and truthful about my journey than to just sugarcoat it because I mean it when I say it does get better if you allow it and anything is possible. Like I wanna cry and just shake your anxiety off and let you know that it will be okay. And I'm gonna reiterate that throughout this video because coming from experience, it truly like I could tell you this because I've gone through it is what I'm trying to get at. So anyway, the pandemic hit and although it definitely hurt in so many ways, it helped me, right? Emotionally, mentally, spiritually, because that was my opportunity to 
really fall in love with me and do some of the inner work, the shadow work, because I ended up sitting with my darkest of darkest traumas. I fought with the fires of hell and then learned more about who I am becoming, who I was and who I wanna be. And all that allowed me to look imposter syndrome in the face and say, Foster syndrome. We know it. You know it. I know it. It's increased self doubt, anxiety, feeling like a fraud, procrastination, or even thinking mm, someone else could have done that better than me. You know, all that negative self talk we tell ourselves. <sighs> Let me start by saying it is normal because we're human. And we're gonna talk ourselves down because we think that's all we know in specific moments. But no, try to auto-suggest yourself to think better. This practice has helped me a lot. Like what I mean by that is when those negative thoughts come about, practice bringing in thoughts that bring you into a better space, right? For example, you're thinking, hmm, this idea ain't good enough or I'm not good enough. Like fuck this. Rather than that, think I did the best I could. What I learned this time, I'll definitely do better the next and apply that. It's not an overnight thing, but gradually practice that every time. Learn about yourself and along the way your path starts to clear for you to be the best version of you. And I want to reiterate this, okay? It takes time. It takes patience, determination, and the willing to do whatever it takes to be that best version of you. Yo, I'm still practicing. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. It's an everyday practice. It's an everyday experience. The more you do it, though, like the more you allow yourself to think and believe. Why settle when I can literally have and be anything I want? the better it will get. Creative blocks though, hmm, that's one thing. And that also is normal, let me tell you that much. So please do not belittle yourself for it. We all go through these phases where we're tired and burnt out. It's again, your opportunity and most likely a sign to recharge, rejuvenate, and rest. And I am still practicing my own advice here when I say make rest a part of your routine. I find myself having creative blocks when I try to force an idea into existence. And from experience, I've realized I produce the best work when I'm having fun or just naturally going with it. And I know it's easier said than done. The reason I would probably think what's the point of any idea that I can think of is because I'm being limited by my understanding of the world being only what I already know about without the comprehension that there are new and exciting things I'm yet to discover. After going through so many hurdles, breaking down so many walls because of this, these creative blocks I've had, luckily I've managed to get out of this thinking trap, so to say, and I formulated a list of things that have helped me and that will hopefully help you stay in your creative flow. All right, one, stop trying. What I mean by that is do something else for a bit, right? That isn't what you do all the time. Like for example, I'm a filmmaker and of course I'd love to capture every moment of every second of the damn day, but I have to put my foot on the brake to discover and have fun doing other hobbies or I will get burnt out from it. And I have before and it's a scary thing to go back to, to be honest. So I try to create time for me to just do other things. That allows me to step away from my creative work 
and allow my mind to naturally formulate ideas from the inspiration I get from doing something else. Number two, go somewhere different. Allow yourself to get a perspective on the world and your work. Sometimes you can become very consumed in the world that immediately surrounds you because you're so comfortable and you're used to it. So just because that's all you can see doesn't mean that's all there is. It can be as simple as taking your work to a cafe or a library or even beyond, like take yourself to a different city for a few days if you're able to. So number three, spend time with people. Same thing with getting a different perspective, but you can also learn from people. You know, sometimes just being around other people can spark your creativity. It's like sort of getting that permission from someone else to get started on an idea helps like that motivation return. Cause I know being around other people, one gives me a break from the work that I do. And two, it is inspiring being around other people and seeing what they're up to, what they're doing, or just simply just having fun. Number four, stop worrying. Like I said, your motivation will return. Your creativity and passion will eventually get back because, I mean, realistically, no one ever runs out of ideas forever, right? We all go through this and worrying about it will only prolong the problem. Number five, don't be afraid to let go of ideas that are holding you back. Sometimes you just need to push through with a project or work through tough times when you lose motivation, that you're pushing for something that you know deep down isn't right. And that's pushing away your motivation and creative spark. When I work on a project for like three weeks and another idea sparks today in this moment, then I can execute right then and there. It doesn't mean that I spent three weeks, whatever I spent three weeks on is better than the one I just formed 10 minutes ago. Most times acting on an idea immediately will keep that motivation and spark alive. Cause to be honest, if I drag a project for too long, I end up forcing myself to finish. So I usually don't like to get to that point. But when I do, it takes some pushing for me to just see through the entire thing. I mean, it happens, but let's try to avoid it. So a great way to start filmmaking or getting into photos or videos or whatever you wanna do is just to start. Of course, with the camera in your pocket, which is your phone. I mean, a lot of people will argue that it isn't all about gear and truthfully, it isn't. It's 90-ish percent, I mean, make your argument, right? It's like your skills and knowledge on how to frame a shot, light it up, or simply getting creative with your environment. A few ways to get started though is one, learn about composition. I've talked about this in my previous videos, but composition can say a lot from simply how you frame it. Two, film your experiences, right? Like hanging out with friends and family, going outside to the park, basically just starting to get familiar with framing your shots and learning what looks and works best for you. Um, another thing is like study your favorite filmmakers, try editing first, go out, film anything and everything, take advantage of your environment. I think a lot of people just sit and wait around for things to happen for them. We're surrounded by so much creative content that inspire me. And a lot of what I know now, especially starting out years ago, was not just school, but especially YouTube. So one channel I recommend is Danny Gieverts, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So I recently discovered his work earlier this year and yo, so great, such a great, independent filmmaker from his breakdowns, behind the scenes, short films, and a lot of consuming his content has made me a better filmmaker. A great way to get your foot in the door within the industry is to add yourself to Facebook groups that are specific to what you want to do. Or even I started doing things for free a lot when I was getting started, just so I could have something to show for when I'm trying to pitch or cold email or DM people to create something for them. So a great way to get inspired and stay motivated. Personally, I find inspiration anywhere I go. Like I used to say this cause it is true. And people would look at me like, what the 
fuck? I would look into an alleyway or I would come across one and there's like dumpsters and trash and whatever and it doesn't look cool to an ordinary person. But for me, I could find inspiration within that and I would immediately see a vision in my head of where I could take that and turn it into something beautiful. The amount of creativity that so many people show is wild. That's where I see inspiration. So with that being said, be inspired by people's work. Do not compare yourself to people's work because it's easy to do that. It's easy to compare yourself or what you're doing to someone else when you simply just be true to you and do what you want to do while having fun with it. And then you'll, you're going to produce some sick shit. That's how you stay motivated. It's is constantly and naturally allowing inspiration to strike no matter where you are. Good thing to do is like write down your ideas. I sometimes carry a notebook around as weird as it is. I mean, I'd rather write it than type it on my phone because it helps the idea thrive a little more, but that's just me. Understand this. No one is going to hand you anything. If you want something, work your ass off to go and get it. And to do that, there's a few things to remember. Create your own opportunities. I say this time and time again from experience because I believe you could do it. If you want to gain skills and knowledge as a filmmaker, you have opportunities everywhere. You just have to break your walls down to believe it. You have a friend who does music, do a free music video for them. You got someone who has a crazy life story, produce a documentary. It could be as simple as going out to film yourself, right? Like three shots, wide shot of you walking into frame, medium shot of you doing your action, extreme close up to show like your emotions, whether it's your eyes or whatever. Or if you want to get into commercials, do spec commercials for your favorite brand. Sky is the limit. You could do whatever the fuck you want. I'm just so passionate about wanting to show others that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And the only limitations are the ones that you put on yourself. So when you get to a point with enough experience, don't be afraid to say no to projects that don't have your interest or you don't seem passionate about. Because it's better to be 100% in on a project and produce the best vision for your client than to be 50% just because you wanted the money. Remember, just because they hired you, it also has your name and brand all over it. Y'all, that was a load of information, but I say it all because I've been there, for real. I'm such an advocate for having the faith and seeing the potential people have but having to watch them soak in their own suffer, knowing I have been there and done that before. I, I mean it when I say anything is possible and you could do it if you put your mind to it and you believe it yourself. I hope you took something away from this video and I apply it to your journey to becoming the best version of you. Practicing every day and knowing it gets better from here if you let it. Please stay tuned for way more content. I'm super excited to share my journey with you and to stay connected. Make sure you follow all my socials linked below. Please like this video, comment what you're going to do to be a better you, share it with your people, and if you aren't already, please subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see y'all at the next video. Peace!